Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Super Skill Pinball 4K. Yikes, what a name. No disclaimer for this one, Howard on our Discord raved about this game, and I had to get a copy to try it out. Roland writes to this point have been pretty hit or miss for me. Does this one have more theme and more staying power? Let's find out and get to the list. I'm going to start out with a mix at number five, and that's the fact that, like most roll and rights, this is just a beat-your-own-score game. But unlike most roll and rights, they don't have a table at the end that tells you what's a good score or what a bad score is, which means you kind of got to figure it out yourself. But the reason this is a mix for me is because it's pinball, and that's how it works. They have a little thing on the back of the rulebook where you can put your scores down, and you just want to beat your own high score. And I assume people will post their scores on BGG and the like, and you can try to, like, get to the top of the leaderboard. So it should be a fixable problem. Problem, but still, just out of the box, you can feel like, I don't know if that was good or not when you see your final score. I'm moving down to a full con for my number four, and that's the fact that the game can overstay its welcome, especially on certain tables. Although the tables themselves have a ton of variety, we'll get to that in a second, playing on the same table for three full rounds, and with the rounds sometimes going quite long, if you manage to kind of keep yourself alive through different tricks, can make the game start to feel a little bit stale at the end, because three rounds is almost just too much. Now, you need them to get the full combo potential, so I don't know if they could have cut one without messing with the experience, but it can be a little negative sometimes. And of course, for this review, I'm focusing on solo play and not the two to four player competitive play, but if I was doing a competitive review, this one might be number two or number one, because when I've played, sometimes you finish at the same time, but sometimes one player can finish like 30 minutes after another player, and it could totally ruin the entire multiplayer experience. So just a big warning if you're looking at this one for multiplayer instead of solo. I would recommend just stopping when the first person finishes and, you know, not worrying about your scores that much, but your results may vary. But now let's get to the good stuff. My number three is a full-on pro, like I already mentioned, and that is the great variety in the four boards that come in the game. Each of these boards has several unique mechanics, and I do mean several, from the Netrunner one, where you do runs and push your luck, to the Dancing one, where you're balancing short-term and long-term scoring, playing balls on two different boards, to the crazy dragon one I show in my playthrough, where you level up your character and get different spells and use them to change the entire board state. And what I really love is that they each have their own internal combos, and these kind of pinnacles of scoring you can try to reach game after game that will almost never happen but feel so amazing when they do. And that goes right into my number two, another full-on pro, which is how exciting and fun the push-your-luck nature of the game can be. The game presents you with these constant grueling choices. Do I play it safe, or do I go for the gold? And going from the lowest lows when you roll poorly and lose your ball or tilt the table too much, to the highest highs of perfectly rolling the right thing to get that huge score, makes this by far the most dramatic, exciting, and fun roll and right I have ever played. And that goes right into my last point, a huge pro, and that's the fact that this feels like pinball. And that comes from the main mechanic, which is you roll these two dice, you pick one of them to move your ball with, and the idea is you have to always fall towards the bottom of the pinball machine, unless you're on the flippers, and then you can go up as high as you want. But only to the yellow side when you're coming from the yellow flipper, only to the red side when you're coming from the red flipper. And it takes what would be, for me at least, a fairly stale numbers game, and brings it to life makes it feel like a pinball table. It's hard to express how cool it is, and I just love, love the core mechanic of the game. So overall, if you can't already tell, this game is awesome. Definitely by far my favorite solo roll and write to date. If you can find a copy for the full price of $20 or a discounted version, definitely pick this up because it's a real winner. But if you think you're going to play this multiplayer, just be aware of the problem of some players finishing before others. That does mean that this game does not rise to my favorite multiplayer roll and write. That's probably still Cartographers, but man, this one is awesome. And if you want to see a full playthrough of the Dragon Slayer board, click the link that just popped up. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.